Amber is dying. My van's on its last legs, leaving me with a tough decision to make. So, naturally, I went with the most ridiculous one. Brought an entire other sprinter as a donor van, strip it completely down for its parts, and rebuild mine from the ground up, reaching level two of its triggered brumification. There was a lot here to do and it was not going to be easy, but I think worth it. Me and my van have been through a lot together and in one foul swoop I can fix the big issues and the niggly little issues that have been bugging me since day one. The biggest one being that bastard semi-automatic gearbox. But right in the back of my mind, doubt did start setting in. It's just a big task folks and I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't nervous. I'm just going to have to do it. On top of the donor van, I still needed to get around, which is where Lenny came in. The van undergoes some major surgery and currently not really being drivable. Um, I was a bit stuck and I needed something to at least get around, go and get parts, get the dog around, you know, go shopping, all the sort of stuff. I needed to do um, that I currently can't. So Jez messaged and he just picked up a little Lupo he was selling for his friend's daughter, uh, lovingly named Lenny, and uh, she only wanted 500 quid for him, so perfect. He's got a roaring one litre, um, tells that you're absolutely killing him on the motorway, but already I am absolutely in love. When I was 17, before I got into my big mini fad, uh, I wanted a Lupo as my first car, so you know I'm just sort of getting back and reliving youth really. Um, the seats fold down flat so I can get all my tools in and hopefully a sprinter engine and other such large items. He got a little bit of acne, bless him, but um, he goes well and for the price I paid, what a car. I'm well happy with Lenny, I like you Lenny. I put him straight to work, loading him up to the hilt with planks so that I could prop the donor van up on the other side of the farm. You've driven all over my seats already, yes you are. Unbelievable state of affairs, lads. One thing about where we are, it's sheep, you've got to close all the gate. All this weight. I can get bloody everything in this thing. That's a good boy, Lenny. I know you're a good boy too. Who's this then? Hello. Oh, no. Have a good day. Yeah? Oh, you'll be all different. Don't eat my wing there, I need that. Okay, see you in a bit. You're jealous because I'm not cursing you. Okay, so today's mission I've got some map gas now uh, to heat up all the suspension bolts. Ah, bollocks, I was supposed to buy a bloody 24mm. Uh, ugga dugga socket. Crap. We'll figure some out there. Ugh. If not, I'll just be locked. If I can't get bolts off, I'm gonna just cut them off. I can't be asked to f around. Just another day of more pilfering, really. First things first, I just think, remember. Ha <laughs> uh, You wanna be out of the way for this bit, dude? Come on, over there. Right, first put a call because I've just remembered the van has got no fuel and it's starting to get cold at night. I need the diesel to run in. This has got a full tank of fuel, so I'm going to steal some. Um, I don't know what it's like yet. It could be really bad and just I'll have to throw it, but I hope not. So I've just pulled the pipe off the fuel filter. I'm now going to pull that back through. Hopefully, I can get the gravity on my side and just siphon it out. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. Not the old cherry can. Although that's not going to fit under there, is it? Bullshit. However, the pipe I bought for siphoning wouldn't reach. And after scouting around the van to see if there was anything I could use, I come up with nothing. 
Well, this isn't going well. I can't find bugger all to put it in. Ah, don't make me go back to the barn again. Okay, new plan. I'm going to see if I can get it to filter through from the return. Uh, the engine's, what do you call it, return pipe. And if I do that, it'll run it through the diesel filter. God, this is not... Okay. I thought I was dead clever. Cutting the return pipe to the tank would mean the engine would pump all the fuel into the jerry cans for me. I have an on and off switch via the key and going through the filter, any crap fuel it would clean for me. However, nothing was coming out, which baffled me for a minute until it all became clear. So maybe I cut the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forcing me to run back to the barn and cutting a longer length of my hose off. Oh. One thing doing it with petrol or with diesel, just oil. Oh. We're getting some. And so the Lupo gained its second job of the day, fuel tanker, ferrying the fuel back to my van so I could put it in the tank. Well, I was concerned that the fuel... Oh, sorry. Still got loads of... <laughs> Still got loads of diesel in my mouth. I was concerned that the fuel was old, but as it turns out, Fuel is red diesel. Now it's okay because um, the van's gonna be stationary for I don't know how long. It's not gonna be used for propulsion. It's just for the diesel here. So I'm maintaining the narrowboat ethic of it's only being used for heat, therefore I can put it in my tank. And if you've got any objections to that, you can put it down in the comments where I will not read it. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Eventually the tank was almost empty and wouldn't siphon anymore. So to get the last quarter or so I just popped the filler neck off. Continuing on with the fluid removal, I got into draining and removing the radiator, which went not well. After a little bit of bath and some strangely smelly fluids involved, oh. the radiator was ready to come out and miraculously my shirt and trousers swapped colours. I got back onto the leaf springs and now armed with the map gas, it was a lot easier. I say a lot easier, about as easy as two inch bolts that look like they've been under the sea for 10 years would come off. With all the leaf spring bolts now finally off, it was just the last few things holding the axle to the chassis.
Okay. Out. The chances of me dragging this is very small. Replace them anyway, and I'm going to leave this in situ because I can't get the things off. I need assist ons basically, but I do want to get one of these off so I can check for sure that it'll fit on the van before I go ahead and do anything else. onto the front shocks and this time I've remembered to loosen the bolts. Oh dear. I was hoping they were good. I wanted them. But hey this whole thing a bit of a gamble. Especially being a grit truck. Some things like the leaf springs I know they're just whacking hunks of metal, they'll work. Get them blasted up, get them painted back up, grease in between, good. The uh, steering rack, even though the wishbones are completely shagged, I can make it work. These, nah, then there's just no point putting them on. Right, so I've got to go to a parts place. Uh, tomorrow and pick up the U joints for the new leaf springs. I'm just going to call them back. I'm after some uh, front shock absorbers for a 2004 Sprinter. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks. <sighs> well, 60 quid each. Uh, but they're coming for the same time tomorrow as the um, U bracket, so. Hey, the brake pad has still got the original Mercedes. Um, pads in which have still got most of them on the discs nah the discs are too far gone but the caliper itself is still pretty shiny and the money to pay for those new parts came later that day when my friends Ben and Jenya from another converted ambulance come to buy the bonnet possibly the only panel on this worth selling. So all in all today, a good haul. Back at the barn I was doing a bit more research into the electrical system and any programming issues I may come up against. Right, hit another problem. Uh, and once again it's electrical. All the mechanical side of it is going quite well. The electrical, ECU, programming side of it, even though it's an old truck, is becoming a problem. So as well as the door issues I've got, the wire in loom being completely different, having to store the taco somewhere. I'm also now having read up on some forums. Uh, basically, because I'm putting the other truck's whole electrical system in this, once it fires up, it's then going to be driving with a different diff. And if it realises there's a different ratio and a different speed going on, it can throw up issues in the ECU and throw the van into limp mode, apparently. Now I did just call um, the Milton Keynes uh, Mercedes. He, he basically got to the workshop manager and asked and they don't think, because of the age of the vehicle, they don't think that it will throw up an error code. Uh, so that's one. I'm gonna give one more dealership a try. And if they also say no, then it's happy days. Carry on. Oh, all right, so let's find another dealership. You'll do. Welcome to Lotus Trucking Van, Mercedes-Benz, Wellham Green. Hi there, um, I'm after a bit of technical advice on an older model Sprinter. I was wondering if I could uh, have a chat with someone. 
Hey, I've spoken of weight there. I've just gone to with my colleague. Unfortunately, we can't give out technical information. Only Mercedes can do that. So right. I've got their contact number for you. The other one, actually, just... He said, no, I don't need to, but he didn't sound fully confident. In fact, his actual words were, I've never heard of a sprinter that old. So that's ten minutes. Your call will be answered as soon as possible. Will it? <sighs> Get bollocks to him. Independent Mercedes commercial. Hi there, mate. I'm, um, I've got a bit of a technical issue with my van. I was wondering if I could have a chat with someone and get some information. Uh, okay. Fine, I'm there. I'm to help. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward one. So I'm doing a rear axle swap on an old 2004 Sprinter. Sort of getting things telling me that the ECU is going to throw up some error codes because it's a different ratio. Um, and I can't get a straight answer out of Mercedes, so I was wondering if you guys had any idea if that's a, a thing. I'm not completely sure, but I know that sometimes you can change parameters to change your ratio. Yeah. Right. I, I imagine it being like the ASR or something like that. Um, but it may be that if you do throw warnings up, that you might have to tell it it's got a different type axle in. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, mate, that's a little, a little bit old for us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'm getting that a lot. So you guys are able to plug in and and have a yeah, sort of play around. The, the, we've got the Star Diagnosis, um, right. which is a bit like the main dealer um, diagnostic instrument computer. So yeah. you know, if, if there's something there that can be adapted, then certainly have a go. Okay, brilliant. That gives me a but bit you know more the confidence. Different ratios as well, mate. Always good to just take some notes. So just take yeah, some yeah. That's brilliant. No thank you very much, bud. All right, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. Well, the independents were a lot more helpful than actual Mercedes. But I still didn't get the definitive answer I wanted. Oh damn it man, why is this such a ball leg? Like? So I occupied myself with some easier jobs like swapping trim and bits over. I was now swimming in sprinter parts. So I was swapping the best parts onto the van and removing and getting rid of the parts I didn't want. <laughs> Top quality job I did there. Ignore that. Now, I'm not sure why my van didn't get uh, these in the first place. If they don't protrude past the box, these do. But there is one reason in particular why I have decided to extend them out a bit longer. Even though they are a little vulgar. <laughs> yeah. All this will eventually have to um, come back out, but at the moment I've just got so many sprinter parts. Um, I don't need you. It's just dotted around. I need to, you know, start ridding myself of a few. This one's in much better condition than. Uh, my current one, no split there. All the vents work. It's a little dirty, but nothing that can sort out there. Ah, it's a book. The light adjusters have started working. It was the button that gave up then. The map light, although a cool part of the van's history, never worked and the bulbs are impossible to get hold of. So it's going. A few days before I'd sprayed up some of the parts I was going to be fitting, they're all now dry and ready to go on. This also included engine parts, mostly intake and vacuum pipes. 
as I got to the bottom of the cause of my sluggishness and engine woes. It turns out the engine's fine, it just had a vacuum leak and a split in the intercooler. So again, with the donor van doing less than a quarter of the mileage of mine, all the pipe work got changed to the newer stuff and hey presto. However, I think I'm still going to do the engine swap. As the mileage of my engine is unknown, it was an old ambulance, so it's probably worked hard and has also worked very hard in my tenure. Someone get this man a belt. This glass has got a number of nasty scratches in it. So my idea is to take it out of this door, take the other one out of the other door, you see where I'm going. I'm not sure though how you remove the glass. Oh my God. It's all kicking off. Okay, after YouTubing it, I now know sort of what to do. So yeah, I was trying to figure out how you wouldn't grip this from the window, but you actually just take the window away from it. <laughs> to do the third coat of a van so there's going to be a bit of that noise going on. With both doors stripped down I gave the door cards a good wash down too and then because this is a sprinter gave the insides of the door some love to protect those rust weak spots and greased to pull the window mechanisms to help them along too. Thanks for watching everyone and apologies for my man fluishness during this one. If you're enjoying what's going on here on my mammoth project, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and maybe share the videos to your friends on social media. That will really help me out and keep this project rolling. There's also Patreon where you receive early access to everything as well as extra content. But for now, I'll see you next time. <laughs>